Hello, and welcome to the Chief Architect Quick Tip video. Today we will be covering some techniques you can use to create a great ray traced image. Ray tracing is a process within Chief Architect Premiere and Interiors that takes an image from the program and plays with the light and textures in the room to create a photorealistic image. We'll start by looking at what you can do before you begin your ray trace to alter your material properties and lighting, then we'll go through our ray trace wizard and we'll finish up by looking at some of the properties we can change while the image is in the process of ray tracing. So first, I'm going to open up the plan we'll be working with. This particular plan is actually available for download on our website, chiefarchitect.com, in the samples gallery. You can download it and practice ray tracing with the saved camera image. I'm just going to double click on this camera to open up our 3D view. This is the standard rendering in the program. It's going to show us a little bit of lighting and textures, but doesn't quite have the quality of a photograph. Before we begin our ray trace, we'll first need to take a look at the lighting in the room. So I'm going to open up this light right here in front of us, and we're going to get into the Light Data tab, because that's what's important for our ray trace element. This is telling us that the source is a point light. There are three different source types. A spotlight is great for something like track lighting where you want to spot the light right onto a particular object. And then I'll show you a use for parallel lights in just a second. For a ray trace, you want your intensity to be set very low. Um, the higher the intensity, it tends to look like just a glowing orb once you go to ray trace it. And so setting the intensity low reduces that effect. We do want them to be set to on and to cast shadows. Sometimes you want a fixture to be there, but you don't necessarily want that light to be on, so you can turn it off and it'll still have the same effect. Now you do have the option of only using it in a camera view or using it in both. So there's quite a few features that you can get in here and play with, including the color that the light's putting off. I'm going to select OK, because that light is fine. And let's get into our floor plan mode really quickly. I'm going to show some added lights that we can place in our plan. So this here is an added parallel light. And what this does is that you don't necessarily want a fixture placed right next to the cabinets, but you want the cabinets to be lit up in the same way that it would be if you did have a fixture next to it. In our floor plan view, we can see not only the light fixtures that we have placed in the plan, but we also have these added lights which display in yellow. Sometimes you have a situation where you want light to be cast on cabinets so that they don't show up dark in a plan, but you don't want to place a light fixture right next to them. So this is a parallel light that will simply shed light onto those cabinets so that in a ray trace view, those won't appear too dark. You also can place added lights as spotlights or point lights on top of other lights just to increase the effect or to place the light in a different spot than it is within the fixture. In an exterior ray trace, it's very important to set up your sun angle because that's going to tell it the time of day and what type of light is going to be cast as well as how long your shadows are going to be. So this is actually a shadow that's being cast from the home, showing you where that shadow is going to fall if you were doing an exterior image. And for interior, that can be important for light coming in through the windows. So now, let's go back into our camera view and we'll get into some of our material properties. Material properties are equally important to the lighting in the room because the two play off of one another. So up here in our toolbar at the top, we have this Adjust Material Definition tool. And I can click on any material in the room, and we get into the Properties tab to define the material. And so this one is set as a predefined metal and aluminum, and it's going to have much of the effects of an aluminum metal. We also have just our wall material, which is set just in a general material. And from here, we can increase or decrease the transparency, make it emissive so it casts just a slight light in the program, um, change the roughness, just a lot of the different textures. And if you change the radial button down to ray trace, 
it'll show you what that material is going to look like in a ray trace view. The best way to test out the materials is simply to do a preliminary ray trace, see how all the materials are looking. If maybe it's a little bit too reflective or too emissive, then you can get back into your camera mode, change the material properties, and ray trace it again. So now that we have everything set, all of our materials are the way that we want them, we're going to get into our ray trace wizard. So the Ray Trace button is up here again in our default toolbar. And to open it up, we're just going to launch the wizard. And this is going to take us through the various settings within our Ray Trace wizard. So obviously we're indoor. Um, you'll want to do a quick one just to test the materials, but for a good image, obviously you're going to want to have high quality. Then you can either use your active window size or you can increase or decrease the height of the image and sometimes making it smaller will make the image ray trace a little bit faster. And then how much focal blur you want to have. And then you can name various ray trace cameras so that you can use them in the future for your plans. I'm going to cancel out of here because we already have this particular one set. And then you would simply press ray trace and it'll open up your preliminary image. Now it's just going to come up as this series of checker boxes, but as the image ray traces, it'll create that image for you. Now let's open up our ray trace in progress. Once the ray trace has begun, you cannot change any settings in the plan itself. In other words, you can't move an object or adjust your lighting or materials. However, there are several settings that you can use to adjust the image properties, similar to photo editing. So here's our ray trace, and you can see that we're several passes in now. Even though the image is clearly not finished, as it's going to improve with each pass, now is a great time to look at our image adjustments. You'll find those options here in your toolbar at the top. To adjust image properties. There are six different features that we'll use to work with here. Intensity is the first one. It's actually along the lines of brightness, but with tone mapping. It comes in handy if you have an image that the lighting is too dark. You can increase the intensity simply by typing a different number into the box or by dragging this bar. And you can see that the image brightens, but without compromising the quality of the image. If your lights are appearing too bright in your image, sometimes turning off every light in the room before the ray trace then pulling the int image intensity way up during the ray trace will actually achieve the desired effect. I also frequently use this property in exterior images where the sunlight is bright enough that you can't see the image properly. Sometimes bringing down the intensity in an exterior image can improve it greatly. In an interior ray trace, decreasing the intensity can also provide you with some nice mood lighting. Softness changes the pixel intensity and provides a slight softening effect to the image's lighting. This is one property that you just have to play with to see what it does and if you like the effect. You can bring it up to 80 here and we'll see what it does so you can see how that image changes just slightly to soften. Adjusting color correction adjusts the yellow and blue properties of the image. Sometimes when the colors in the room are not looking like you had them set in your standard render, Pulling color correction way up can adjust the image and achieve what you were wanting it to do. So when we pull it way up, you can see how the yellow and blue in the image adjust and it creates a different color effect. And we'll pull it back down. Now with some of our general properties, I personally stay away from brightness as it adjusts the entire image as a whole so it brings the brightness of the full image up rather than the intensity which focuses on exposure. But you can play with the intensity and brightness together to see how the two vary and how they interact, see which one's going to work best for you. Contrast is the relative difference between the light and dark colors in the room. This is a great tool for sharpening edges and is especially handy if you have black or charcoal gray colors in the room is it's going to make those really pop. You only want to bring this up just a little bit and you'll see it has a pretty big effect just from a small adjustment. 
Saturation increases the intensity of the colors. So it's a great tool for exterior scenes especially as it brings out the green in the trees and the grass and accentuates the color of the siding or the flowers in front. It can also be handy if you have a picture that you really want to pop in the image. Sometimes bringing up the saturation can pull those colors out and draw your eye to it. With a little bit of practice, you can use these properties to create high quality images. If we reset to default, you can see how much the image has changed just by adjusting those properties. So now I'd like to show you some sample images so you can see the progression that happens as you ray trace an image. So this, again, is just our standard rendering image within the program before it's been ray traced at all. After one pass, this is what your image will look like. It's obviously quite blurry, but you can start to see the reflection on the countertops. You can see our aluminum is looking quite a bit more like aluminum and not just like the gray material that is in a rendering. And we're even getting a slight reflection on our window over here. Here's after four passes. So it starts to clear up with every pass that you have. So the longer you allow it to sit, the better quality image you're going to get. Here's after 12 passes, just a little bit clearer. You can start to see it on the aluminum, especially on this railing in the back and on the clarity of the edges. And finally, here's our final product image and you can see everything is very clear. We've created a very nice image and generally if you just allow this to sit for a few hours or even if you start the ray trace as you're leaving for the day and allow it to ray trace overnight, you'll come back to this excellent image in the morning. And in following the techniques laid out in this video, you can start to create high quality images very quickly. Now I want to show you a few things on our website, so I'm going to pull up chiefarchitect.com. This was simply a quick overview of ray tracing, but we have an extensive three-part video on the subject available on our training videos page. You can find that here under our user center in training videos. Then we'll simply type in ray trace. You can search for any topic of videos. And scrolling down a little bit, you can see there's quite a few results that come up here, including this three-part kitchen ray trace project that will guide you step-by-step -step through some more of the features that we've discussed here today. Also, I want to show you our samples gallery, again under the user center. And right here in the sandstone beam bath is where you can download the X5 plan and open up the camera just as we did today work with some ray tracing. There's also a how to design video that you can watch that will walk you through step by step of creating this design. So thank you for watching today's quick tip on ray tracing. Again, you can find more information about this topic on our training videos page, especially these three videos. Check out the other features on our website, including some additional ray trace samples, and please feel free to contact our sales department either via email or with either of these phone numbers if you want more information. Thank you again, and have a wonderful day.